All right, YouTube, Repo Man 64. Try it on this setting so that uh, you get more of the screen. Are you listening? Are you listening to all the watchmen that have been screaming about the rapture about to occur? I believe it all started, well, it started for me around five years ago. Started for others a few months before the Revelation 12 sign when they discovered that was about to happen. Um, if you count the nine months that Jupiter was in retrograde, uh, it's been seven years that we've been looking at this, and it's been a good seven years. Uh, we have learned together so much, so many pieces of the puzzle. So, as usual, I took a bunch of uh, pictures, and I just feel like we're at the very end. And the question is, have you been listening? Salvation is of the Lord, lest any man shall boast. Salvation is not in knowing the right date. But being the bride, the Bible says that we are dreaming about his return. And that's what, why we've been doing this. It's not about, of course, I mean, so many dates have passed not about knowing the date it's about the journey along the way to the date and when it happens uh, we will understand I believe in heaven that when you're in the car and you're driving to a destination your the, the parents will always think up things to do along the way to make the time pass and if we knew seven years ago the date of the rapture then I think a lot of people would not have been saved that were saved that got involved with this and started trying to figure it out. Um, like Aaron says, I'm a child of God. That's it. That's all. That's it. That's all. It's not anything difficult. Satan has made it difficult. You must do this. You must do that. You got to walk this way. You got to act that way. If you're still doing this then you're not saved and and all these things when it's as simple as like lisa boyce always says at the beginning of her videos and she's completely correct it's all about jesus that's it that's all and so with that we'll get into the pictures are you listening are you listening this rapture is about to occur are you listening We'll start up here with the timeline so I can show you where we are. I want to tie in a bunch of people's videos and show that even though they are calling it a different Hebrew date, they're still falling perfectly on the timeline. I will always, until I get to heaven and God says you were completely wrong, which I don't think that's going to happen, think that March 17th is the head of the year. March 16th is the last sabbath of the year setting up the sabbaths for the following year and so here we are right here what is this march 16th we are in adar 21 right now it's adar 21 march 6th i think i said 16th march 6th coming up next up here at the top lazarus falls sick on the 13th mary and martha send a messenger two messengers to jesus regarding Lazarus being sick. It, we know it's a two-day walk because Jesus sat still for two days. Then he walked, and two days later, he resurrected Lazarus. Lazarus died on the day that Jesus says, are there not 12 hours in a day? That does happen on March 16th. Mary and Martha bury him on the 16th. On the 20th of March is when Jesus raises Lazarus. Now, there's a lot of talk about, well, this is actually this date and that date, and that's fine. But what's happening that I notice is that they, again, and this happens every now and again, where the timelines seem to come together. So Steve Fletcher's looking very intently at March 11th. March 11th, if you think about a six-month period of time, September 11th was the first day of creation. So March 11th would be six months earlier technically it's six months and two days and march 13th is actually the six month 
point, but 311911. I I get where he's coming from. I get what he's looking at. So C Fletch is really pumping out the videos on March 11th. So I will be watching. There's a date that's a little bit closer, which is tomorrow, which I will also be watching. But for me, my highest watch day every year is March 16th because it's the day that no man knows the day or the hour. It is the day, the last day of the year, just prior to Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah was changed by God. God doesn't change, but he changes the date. He said many times, I thought to destroy them, but then I decided not to. Or I, He did destroy uh, a group of people. He said that uh, I thought to destroy the whole world, but then I decided not to. I had uh, Noah build an ark. He even says in the Bible, I make a new thing. So God doesn't change, but his dispensations do. There was a dispensation after creation where there was no law. Law didn't exist. He created the law, brought the law about in um, to Moses. So we see that God makes changes, but God himself and his nature, he can't become evil. He can't do evil things. So God does make changes, though, different dispensations. And he's going to start a new one here soon. The, uh, the age, we call it the age of grace and that it's ending as soon as the bride leaves. But technically, that's not completely accurate. When Jesus was on the cross, Jesus said, in Mark and in Matthew, he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Were the people who were writing this stuff down, Matthew and Mark, incorrect when Luke said, Into thine hands I commend my spirit? Or in John, he says, It is finished. Did they hear something different? The answer is, perhaps they heard something different, or this is what God told them to write in their part of the Bible. And the reason it was written that way is because the left behind when Jesus went to the cross and he died on the cross for the sins he died for the sins of the whole world he died for everyone who he knew was going to finally accept him some have done it already some will do it during the tribulation and i'm going to show you uh the rich man and lazarus where he even says hey can somebody go warn my brothers he's like they have the same exact opportunity as everybody else there's a reason why we went through this over the last 2,000 years. God does not want robots in heaven. He wants people who are genuinely thankful and genuinely understand that they were going to go to hell if it wasn't for the free gift that Jesus gave. During the tribulation, people will be dropping to their knees every single day going, Oh God, please, I don't want to accept the mark. I heard about this. Somebody warned me about this. I don't want to accept the mark. And then the Jews, of course, at the very end, we see that. They are going to finally recognize the one that they had pierced. All right, let me go through the pictures here. So my highest watch day, March 16th. But there's a lot going on right now. March 11th, well, I'll show you here in a second. Uh, you can take a, a screenshot of that again. I, I got a cleaner one. Somebody said the other one didn't work. So I, I went to Facebook and I found it. You can go on Facebook right now. And just type in what happened. Uh, what do they call these things? QR codes. What happened? QR code. And this will come up in uh, Facebook. And you can uh, take a picture of that yourself. Now, this is March 16th, the day of equal parts. We are now, as of March 17th, in the age of Aquarius, I showed you that in the last video. We have finally transitioned into the age of Aquarius. You know about the precession of the sun. It moves a constellation every 2,000 years. It started at the at the very end of, um, I'm going to forget, Castor and Minor, uh, Gemini. And then it moved into Taurus. And then it moved, uh, Taurus was where Abraham was on the scene. And then it moved into Aries, where Jesus was, and that it's been going through this huge constellation, Pisces, for the last 2,000 years. And just now, it has entered into the age of Aquarius. So, on the head of the year, on March 17th, Rosh Hashanah, we will officially be in the age of Aquarius. All right.
you see this. Let's see here. Now, March 30th. March 30th is the day Jesus went to the cross. On my timeline, it never changes. It was always March 30th, 3.30, 30 AD at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's the day that Jesus went to the cross. It was a Wednesday when he went to the cross. He rose Saturday night, Sunday morning. He was in the grave for a complete 84 hours, three and a half days. The Bible says three days. And it meant three days. It meant that he completed an entire three days. So notice ponds and brooks up here in Aries. Ponds and brooks is the devil comment that they're talking about. You see ponds and brooks right there. Same thing here. Ponds and brooks is visiting the fish that's pointing up, not the one that's looking back. Uh, like Lot's wife, but the one that's looking straight up, that's the one you want to be. That was why the warning was there. Don't look back, meaning don't be a tribulation saint. Always look to Jesus. Always dream about his return. Ponds and Brooks is right there on March 16th on the fish that is escaping. He is waiting for the rapture to try to do something, but of course he will fail because into thine hands, I commit my spirit, meaning God is going to take care of it. We don't have to do anything. He's got it under control. Ponds and Brooks will visit Aries and make it a beeline towards Jupiter and Uranus. Now, Jupiter being the king planet representing, I've heard many say, uh, Jesus, and then Uranus representing heaven. So, uh, we see here on April the 8th, during the eclipse, it happens right on the thread. So that is another very high watch day, April the 8th. But look where Ponds and Brooks is. Look where the Devil Comet is. It is heading, making a beeline towards Jupiter and Uranus, but then it falls. It falls after that. So you see the sun down there being eclipsed. It's just two different pictures of the same, same thing on April the 8th. All right. <laughs> now, I will say this just so that, let me see, how do I word this? I will say this just to make a point that God is perfectly capable of using more than one timeline. However, they will come together and make sense as they as he does this. And I'm going to show you how that happens on this date. Now, March, it is now March the 6th. It's about to be March the 7th. March the 7th represents, um, is, that, is that 153 days? I believe, I, I think the next picture. From October the 7th, when Israel was invaded, to March the 7th, which is tomorrow. Now, this that's this evening for me will become morning on March the 7th. So, again, high watch date. It's 153 days from when they were invaded. I felt like March the 7th would be something to look at or something might happen on that date. Now, we know that Jesus went to the cross on a Wednesday. He went to the cross on a Wednesday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He does not count those three hours until dark as his first day. He doesn't do it. Jesus is not going to cut the time short. He spent a full three days and three nights in the tomb. So on the 20th, we'll use that as an example. It's actually the 30th, but I'm going to show you why um, God's using two timelines here. On the 20th, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus goes to the cross. He spends the 21st the 22nd and the 23rd. Now, this is just, again, it's actually the 30th, but I just want to show you so we can understand the timeline. He spends the 21st, 22nd, 23rd day in the tomb. He spends the 20th at night, the 21st at night, and the 22nd at night. Now, the 23rd at night is Saturday. <clears throat> he doesn't complete it. Just like he didn't complete it on Wednesday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon till 6, he doesn't complete Saturday night because the Bible is very clear that he rises before sunrise. He rises before sunrise, so that 
night doesn't count. So we have a full three days and three nights. Now, if you count from three o'clock in the afternoon to six o'clock in the morning, and then six o'clock in the morning to, I'm sorry, 6 p.m. at nightfall till 3 a.m., you have exactly 84 hours. But look what happens this year, which is kind of cool. On the 30th is actually when Jesus went to the cross. You count and you see on a Wednesday would be the day Jesus rises on the Gregorian calendar. So it matches. It matches because 30th at night becoming the 31st would be Sunday. And then Wednesday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon becoming uh, the 4th. You see how it how Wednesday and Sunday are featured in both of these calendars. This only happens this year. This won't happen again for many, many years where <coughs> Wednesday is Sunday and Sunday is Wednesday. It's, it's backwards. Now, this is what I wanted to show Steve Fletcher's looking at March 11th. And But when God said, this now is ahead of your year, he was talking about September the 15th. And it moved back to March the 17th. It's two, it appears to be two days off only because the Gregorian calendar has more months, has 31 days in the first half of the year than it does in the second half of the year. So technically, March 13th is September 11th. So that's a very high watch day for me. So we have March 7th, March 13th, very high watch days. And then I just showed you this, October 7th to March the 7th. Tomorrow morning in Israel, will we see an event marking the 153 fish that we see that they pulled to the shore? Will this mark something for us to put together on March 7th? On March 7th? Now, are you listening? This, I believe, is why Steve Fletcher is looking at March 11th, because the evening or at nightfall, and they always count the day beginning at nightfall, even God does, because at creation, he said, and the night and the day were the first day. He starts, if he started creation on Sunday, and the night and the day were the first day, that means Saturday night at nightfall, he began. Sunday was the first day, beginning at nightfall. It's the same thing here. March 10th is actually March 11th, because at nightfall, it becomes March 11th in Israel. It'll still be the 10th here, but it'll be the 11th in Israel. This is when Ramadan begins. Now, I've heard a lot of talk on uh, Global Rapture, Rapture Watchers and uh, Lisa Boyce from Watch Woman 65 that they are pushing to create havoc on this day. It'll be very interesting to see what happens on March 11th. On March 12th, being March 13th, again, the 13th, uh, in Israel, Venus will meet up with Mars. Now, that's uh, Venus representing Jesus, the bright morning star. And Mars, I believe they say, represents uh, Satan. Uh, so we have that meeting up on Saturday, March 12th. Uh, early morning sky, Saturday, March 12th, and to us, that would be, I believe, March 11th still. So Steve Fletcher might be on to something there. March 25th, nobody talks about this. They talk about the solar eclipse, but they ignore this. March 25th, it will be March 25th, Eastern Standard Time, when this lunar eclipse happens at one, almost at 1 a.m. So it will still be the 24th in other parts of this country and, and so on as we head west. Now, I'm going to keep going. Remember these dates. I have said for the last five years that Jesus went to the cross on the 30th. This, you've seen others point to this. Shabbat Parah 2024, 5784. They are correct. As of March 17th, it will become 5784 or 5994. As of March 30th is the anniversary of the day Jesus went to the cross, just shy of seven years to be 2,000 years ago. This happens on March 30th. Like I said in my last video, I bet dollars to donuts that this is the day that they are going to sacrifice that red heifer because of this. Now, did anybody see that CBS 
um, report where, and, and just think about this for a second. Nobody likes CBS. Nobody trusts CBS. So when they call CBS to come over there and interview them and show them the altar and show them three red heifers, not four. We know that one's been disqualified. There are four. And they show three. The Jews are not dumb people. They are very smart people. I've seen the reports fly off the chain. Oh, they've already sacrificed one. No, they haven't. They have the one that they're going to sacrifice. They're going to do it on March the 30th. And it is the same day that Jesus went to the cross almost 2000, 1,993 years ago. And they're going to mess up. I mean, they're smart, but they're missing out on the, on the Savior. They're going to mess up and crucify or sacrifice this cow on the same day that Jesus was uh, crucified. And the same day Jesus was crucified, these guys couldn't put it in their head that it's the same day that they were celebrating Passover in 30 AD. They missed it. As smart as the Hebrew, the Jewish people are, they missed it. And they've been missing it for nearly 2,000 years. And they are going to continue to miss it for the next seven years until they look up and cry and recognize the one that they had pierced. It's going to be incredible. So March the 30th, they're going to do it. They, they did this on purpose. So they brought uh, CBS out there, did this whole interview thing just to show three red heifers and not four and to set off the Watchman community, including everyone in the world, to say, oh, they've already sacrificed this animal. No, they haven't. They're not going to do it until this on March 30th. All right. Let me get back to the pictures here real quick. I mean, to the timeline here real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. Let me go over to this side now. All right. Back here at the beginning, March 16th, the last Sabbath. It is the day of equal parts. It always will be the day of equal parts. It will never change. It's called a kase. It's a hidden day. It has nothing to do with the moon. I'm going to show you something for Spinebreaker, for his benefit, here in a moment. Exodus 12. This now is the head of your year. Rosh Hashanah literally means the first day and first month of the year. That's what it literally means in translation. It is St. Patrick's Day. It is Nisan 1, March 17th, 14 days later. Well, we can go, we can go to the meal with Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, March 24th. We've seen March 25th, as we've been looking at things, we've seen March 16th, 17th. We've seen March 20th, March 25th. The triumphant entry happens on March 26th, which is the 25th for us. This is the day that Miriam dies at the age of 127, three and a half years between the birth of Miriam and Aaron. Okay, she is seven years older than uh, Moses is. March the 26th, Jesus goes to the cross right here. He was born in 3 BC on September the 29th, that nightfall becoming September the 30th. He was 33 years old and 182 years old when he died on the cross on March 30th, 30 AD, 3.30, 30 AD at 3 p.m. Uh, I believe somebody else worked out the year as being March 30th, 40.30 at 3 p.m. Uh, because Jesus would have been 30 years old, years after Christ. Somebody, I, I got that from, some, from somewhere else. The cross will always be 150 days after the flood began. And everybody agreed this year it was on October the 31st. 150 days later <coughs> is March 30th. March 30th is the day they're going to sacrifice this cow. April the 23rd, which is over here closer to second Passover, is when they're going to consecrate their altar or uh, the people to, to be cleansed. So, no, I don't believe they've sacrificed this cow quite yet. Not quite yet. So keep watching. Uh, 
it'll come out either the day it's happening or another day after. We we shall see. Let's see. Yep. This is you see Saturday, March 3rd. How does that fall in line? How does that line up perfectly with the day Jesus went to the cross? I'm telling you, that's the day they're gonna do it. All right. The total solar eclipse uh begins. Is this solar eclipse? I believe this is it. Yeah, uh, begins at uh, Eastern Standard Time, 1.50, and it uh, total eclipse begins at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 3.06. The duration of the eclipse in any given area is 2 minutes and 46 seconds. All right. Whoa, what did that say? Partial eclipse be uh, begins at 1.53. There's that 1.53. That's kind of cool. Didn't see that before. Spinebreaker. Feinbricker has a theory that if I'm right about the moon and you're not to use the moon and that uh, if you uh, take and uh, do the one, you know, there'll be two grinding at the mill and one will be taken and one left. That's a representation of the moon half being half and half. There it is, March 16th, March 16th and March 17th, both days, the moon is half and half. Uh, there's no sliver and there's no full. It happens right in the middle. So I'm like shocked that that even, I don't even think I told him. Spinebreakers have been talking about this for quite some time, that it would be a half moon. Give them a shout out. Now, I'm going to promote a bunch of channels. And why do I do this? I do it because we're about to leave. And if some YouTube channels get taken down, it would be really cool if other channels that are saying similar things to what I'm saying, nobody's looking at uh, barely. I mean, uh, there are several that are looking at the timeline as, hey, this really makes sense. And there's a bunch still looking at the moon. And that's fine. Like I said in the beginning of the video, are you listening? Are you listening to the fact that rapture is about to occur? One of these people is going to be right. And it doesn't matter who, because at the end of the day, it's all about Jesus. Like Aaron says, that's it. That's all. I'm a child of God. That's it. That's all. I like his catchphrase. That was really good. All right. Give him a shout out. This guy right here, trimming the wick, he has four subscribers, two views in five hours, but he really has a good uh, character about him as he's speaking. And what is he saying? We're running out of time. Obedience or sacrifice. So he made a really good video here, trimming the wick. It'd be cool if uh, a bunch of you would go watch his video and give him a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to him so maybe he makes it through and uh, his information get out there. Now, I'm shocked. Under new management, I, I subscribe. Number one, I subscribe because I like the interview he did here with uh, Gary Cam. His name is Terry Cam. I didn't notice that. They have the same last name. Oh. It's a camera. Never mind. <laughs> Their last name is not Cam. It's the Terry camera and the Gary camera. So uh, he does this uh, interview, and uh, I believe in the interview. It's been a while since I saw it. I think that they were saying that it was going to happen on March the 30th, 29th at nightfall. But it's under new management. Look at me, I subscribed, and I was subscriber number 316, March 16th, day of equal parts. I thought that was pretty cool. But uh, he does a, he, he has a really good, uh, he's got good technology, and that's, that's always good uh, with these uh, videos. So go subscribe to him. All right, Brother Victor. Brother Victor did a really incredible video here. I believe Spinebreaker uh, mentioned this to me prior, but it's still cool that it's getting out there. Psalms 124.7 means not Saul, and not Saul, as we have learned, means rapture. And it's in the code, and he does this Bible code thing, which I thought was really cool. Uh, so Brother Victor has a really good channel, and uh, this is a really good video to go watch. Up top. There's my friend Josh down at the bottom, End Times Talk. He, uh, if you need prayer, if you need prayer at all, you just go to him, and he will pray for you, right? He does a lot of live, so uh, a, lot of, a lot of prayers. I did not notice the comment, 
the guy that loves saying nothing burger, you're about to find out what a nothing burger burger is. So six days till March, Steve Fletcher's really been making a lot of video and find a lot of information that is pointing to March 11th, Ramadan. So that'll be pretty interesting. All right. This is my buddy right here, End Time Watchman. If you want to talk to him directly, come into the Discord. He has a room in there that he is moderator of. Uh, we don't interrupt his room or his content. I uh, don't care if it agrees with me. As long as everybody in there is peaceful and nice, if you come in there to create issues, we will, once we find out about you, we will remove you. But everyone in there is actually learning. And they, he's very... Uh, interactive with everybody in the room and does a great job uh, looking at people's uh, uh, information that they bring to him. And he's very mathematical. I'm very calendrical. He's very mathematical. Um, when it comes to the calendar, I can line it up. But when it comes to uh, finding these really cool things, like I did not know that about, uh, about Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, I did not know that, but he found that. That was that was absolutely incredible when I put it on the timeline. Of course, I'm calendrical. All right, so uh, subscribe, of course, to End Time Watchmen. And if you want to talk directly to him, come into the Discord. Are you listening? Are you listening? Billy Train puts a lot of stuff on Facebook. He has a YouTube. Uh, believe it or not. This book is being played out right before our eyes, and it sure is. Everything we've been saying, <coughs> people been saying nothing, Burger. Guess what? It is coming to life right now. We are seeing these things happen in real time right now, just like the Bible said it would. So this rapture event is written in the Bible, and just like the Bible said it would, it is going to happen. Are you listening? And the most of the world and most of the world doesn't even see it. They're not listening. They can't even see what's going on around them. Isaiah 53, we have a little chat that we talk back and forth. He did a really good video here. It's rapture time. I like his videos because he is the um, screaming watchman. You should um, don't change your channel, but maybe you should call yourself the screaming watch. I love his videos. They're loud. They're to the point. We warned you. We've been telling you, you wouldn't listen. And here we are. The rapture is going to occur and you missed it. Now, don't take the mark. You're going to go through some tribulation, but don't take the mark. So I like his channel. It does a really good job. Eker Symphony. She put out a really good video. She uh, spoke quite a bit about, uh, End Time Watchman, Patrick over there, and uh, this video, she's an engineer. She's an engineer, and she can put stuff together that I personally, some of it goes right over my head, but she, it's amazing what she can, sees and can figure out, so she's awesome. Carla? Carla. Sorry, I'm bad with names. I believe it's Carla Iker Symphony. All right. My buddy, the Cataclysm Tony Early. He's uh, making quite a few more videos now, or I think he's, he, he was because he's uh, hurt his, his hand and, his, and he's at home. But uh, he says, you can't make this stuff up, possible sign of. And he does really good videos, like his stuff. He sees things that I would not see. He sees uh, relationships in numbers, and uh, he doesn't forget them. I'll see something, I'll be like, oh, that's cool, and I'll forget it two seconds later. This this guy remembers stuff from years ago, uh, numbers that are coming back around, so it's really interesting, this stuff. Again, I showed you this before. Anybody can do this. Go into time and date. Go to 2600. That's as far as it goes. It'll only let you go to the year 2600, but 600 years from now, the sun will move. The moon will be out of place, but the one thing that will never change, ever, is March 16th is the day of equal parts. It's the day where there are 12 hours in the day, 12 hours at night. It never, ever changes. It goes, moves back and forth by a few seconds. Unlike the, the equinox, it moves a day uh, in one direction or the other, but the equal lux doesn't budge. It stays exactly the same. All right. Here's what I was telling you. We're going to read from Luke. When we're reading from Luke, we know Luke is predominantly speaking to the bride. And this is the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. 
the rich man, and, and by definition, this is the same rich man that walked up to Jesus saying, I have everything. I've done it all. I'm great. All this money, uh, I can have other people do the sins for me. I can walk clean, and I'm going to heaven for sure because I'm so fantastic. And Jesus said, go sell all your stuff. And he couldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. So here we have a parable of the rich man. I would almost call it the parable of the church man. The church is not telling you. Now, I don't want to say that as a blanket statement because there are many churches that are warning you that the rapture is about to occur. Uh, we see several of them. But by and large, for the most part, most churches are not talking about the rapture. They're business as usual. They don't want to make waves. They don't want to scare you. They want you to come back next Sunday. Um, the most preaching they do is on tithing, which is not biblical. Tithing is not biblical. It does, you give as you want to, not because you have to. The Bible does not insist that you give money, but you do it because it is an outward expression of what's going on in your heart. Let's read this. Now, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. He was given everything. Think about a person who's wealthy. They have the ability to buy the best Bible. They have the ability to go to church every week. They have the nicest car. They eat great. Uh, they donate money. They do all these wonderful things. They look like a better Christian. They always will look like a better Christian than you do. You don't have the ability to do what this rich man does. So he's guaranteed heaven, right? Because you can't do what he does, you're guaranteed hell. No, it's opposite of that. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So he's lower than a dog. This man is lower than a dog. Now, doesn't that pretty much describe all of us? We are going through some really bad stuff. Most of us, not all of us, but most of us are going through some really tough times right now. And I have a feeling, just like Job, God is putting us through that just to see if you'll turn your back, just to see how sincere you are about what you believe in. And the more I see people... Uh, getting knocked down a peg, two pegs, three pegs, the stronger they become in the Lord. And that is the sign of a <coughs> true bride. Sorry about that. <coughs> and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into, the, into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. What's the first thing the rich man does? He still thinks, even though he's in hell, that he has some kind of power. He does not like seeing the, uh, the beggar, Lazarus, up there with Abraham. He hates it, and he still thinks he has some kind of moral authority over Lazarus. So what does he do? And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip, that, sorry, that he may dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham just looks at him like, what? Serious? And, and, and Lazarus must be like, what? You want me to do what? But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. So, again, he's not in hell because he's rich. He's in hell because he thinks he has everything he needs. Oh, I'm saved. I'm good to go. I've done all this stuff. I've done so much more than Lazarus. Lazarus is just a beggar. My dogs are licking him. He's nobody. Me, I've done all these great and wonderful things. I'm going to heaven. Lazarus, he's not doing any of those things. He's going to hell. He's not saved. And it's completely the opposite. And that's what catches everybody. 
uh, and sticks them here through the tribulation because that's their mindset. They're in the mindset that they are saved because, and that's contrary to what we learn in the Bible. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither, which means, what does that mean? If you were in heaven, would you ever want to go to hell? No. But you can't go to hell. Once you have salvation, you couldn't go there if you wanted to. Once you're saved, you're always saved. Once that blood gets on you, you can't get it off. Once you're covered, you're always covered. And this is saying exactly that. He can't go there. It's not possible. He couldn't go there if he wanted to. Because once he was saved, he's always saved. So that they which would pass from hence to you, neither, uh, sorry, to you cannot, neither can they pass to us. Of course, the people in hell will be wanting to come to heaven, but they can't. They were not covered in the blood of Christ. They didn't accept or recognize who he was the entire time they lived. They didn't accept or believe in who he was. They believed in their own works. There are no works. There is no works when you get to heaven. Faith without works is dead. I know. I've heard that. If you say, I am faithful, then you will have works, not for salvation. You will show this is a, a litmus test. This is evidence of who you are. You will look just like the wheat. The wheat and the tares grow up together. They look identical. You can't tell them apart. Don't even try. Don't sit there and say, well, this was not saved. That's obvious. You can't do that. The Bible forbids it. You can't take them apart. You can't tell them apart. They both look the same. They both have had, they both have said, I accept Jesus and who he is. And now I do all of these things to make my soul secure in going to heaven because I'm, I, I'm doing these things. So I'm so much better than that person over there. Or I'm wretched. I don't deserve to go to heaven. I do all these things because that's what I feel in my heart. It's almost identical, but it is worlds apart. It is heaven and hell apart. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Now he's telling him to send him back to earth. He's in heaven with Abraham. He is asking that Lazarus be sent to his family's house. He really just has no respect for Lazarus and who he is whatsoever. That's why he's in hell. He has no idea that Lazarus is the bride of Christ and that he is in heaven. And there is no chance once he's there that he will ever go anywhere near hell or ever anywhere near earth again until Jesus rules and reigns. But he wants something. He's rich. He deserves it. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. We have been, are you listening? Are you listening? We have been warned about this for 2,000 years, 1,993 years. We have known about this. We have known about this for nearly 4,000 years from Abraham. We knew about this. We knew Jesus was coming, and yet they crucified him. We know he's coming back soon, and yet they walk around in pride. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, for if nay, he said, no, I'm sorry, and he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. So if, if Lazarus were to resurrect, and went and tell, told them they would change their minds. Repent means turn. It doesn't mean stop sinning. It means turn. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Who are we talking about? Jesus. Jesus rose from the dead. And they still will say, no, he didn't. No, it's that's a... That, and that's a false story. It's a folklore. The Bible was written a long time ago. Nobody needs to listen to it. We have Jesus rising from the dead. We don't need anything else. That's all we need. All right. 
This guy's YouTube was pretty cool. Jay Combs, uh, I believe. I don't know who posted for who. Mark Daniel Capole does a lot of stuff on Facebook. Uh, the Green Devil Comet likely to block total solar eclipse as it approaches near Earth. The Devil Comet is coming down on April the 8th. That is pretty much incredible. I showed you the Devil, devil Comet and how it makes its pass through Pisces and then through Aries and makes its way kind of towards Jupiter, but then veers off and goes down. So I don't know when. Obviously, the rapture is going to occur. I just... It's, it's going to happen at any moment. Any moment it's going to happen. Now, Bill the Artist fixed this. I'm going to show you the other person's name. Uh, they both did. Uh, one found it. Bill the Artist uh, did the artwork. That's why he's called Bill the Artist. He's in Discord. And uh, this is, I think this was posted in my room or in um, Patrick's room, Watchmen, End Times Watchmen. But look at the date, 325. 325, if you remember on the timeline, is the day, um, let me think, 30th. that is the day I believe they had the meal with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. So it's amazing. Look at how that lineup happens. It looks just like the menorah. You won't see something like this again for quite some time. And he does it here again, only in green. And it's the uh, same menorah, Bill the Artist. Here he is, Keith. I believe Keith is the one that uh, put this together. And uh, it says, Menorah in the stars in Jerusalem sky during the lunar eclipse visible in the USA from March 24th. Remember, uh, on the 20th is when Jesus resurrected Lazarus. On the 24th is the day they had that meal. Through the 26th. The 26th is the day that Jesus rode in on the donkey, uh, the triumphant entry, the donkey and the colt. He does that on the 26th. So you see all of that, right? All of these things are happening right now, and they're all landing perfectly. It didn't happen on the 23rd. It didn't happen on the 28th. It happens between the 24th and 26th. Jewish people think it is Purim, then according to their calendar, not Repo Man's, <laughs> I didn't see that, uh, asteroid child is under the wing of Aquila, the flying eagle constellation. Psalms 91, safe under the wings. So, um, and again, uh, the, yes, that is when the, that they are looking at it being Purim. Uh, they are, of course, uh, a month off because it's a different, I don't know how they came from uh, the flood to that date, but that's what they did. So, but again, they're lining up. Thought that was pretty cool. And then here we go again. I think Keith sent this and he fixed it, or Bill the Artist, I don't recall which, but 325. That's just incredible. It's just incredible that that comes up. Are you listening? Earthquakes, uptick. Look at this. This is just today. And I only have mindset at 5.0 or greater. So they're pretty hefty earthquakes that are going on. And they're just they're just hitting quite often. Are you listening? All right, Repo Man 64. Um, the rapture could occur at any moment. It's not really waiting on anything. Uh, wouldn't it be something that uh, 6 a.m. tomorrow morning in Israel, what's that? That's 11 p.m. my time here, Eastern Standard Time. That's in about five hours, five and a half hours. Um, seven, 11, no, oh, that's uh, four and a half hours. But here very shortly would mark 153 days from uh, when they were invaded. Uh, would we see something? I don't know. Um, Damascus is always on the table. We're always looking to see what happens over there. Um, I suspect that there would be some kind of, we don't have to have a warning. I'm not saying that. Um, but in every story we see where God destroyed or thought to destroy, there was a warning. Um, he gave a 40-day warning when he decided not to destroy, but he gave a seven-day warning to Moses. And I figured, I did some math in my head on that. Moses was, I'm, I'm sorry, Noah. I said Moses, Noah. Noah was supposed to go into that ark seven days earlier on October the 24th. So if he goes on October the 30th, 
and it's 150 days to the cross, seven days earlier would be that meal, six days, seven days, that meal with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, or the triumphant entry. No, the triumphant entry is four days before, so let me look at that. Let me see real quick. Seven days prior to the cross, being on the 30th, would be the 23rd. What do we have going on on the 23rd? Right there. Yeah, Mary and Martha are clean after seven days. So do we see a huge event happen on the 16th? And then seven days later, we are clean on March the 23rd. And then we have this meal where Jesus turns water to wine one year earlier. And we have this meal with Jesus in heaven with Lazarus, Mary, and Martha on March 24th. Will we see something huge happen on March the 16th? Remember the dead in Christ rise first. If Lazarus was resurrected on the 20th and we are unclean by reason of a man on a long journey or touching a dead body, we have to perform a ceremony. Some ceremony will take place on March the 19th. And then Seven days after seven days after burying Lazarus, Mary and Martha were clean, which is why they couldn't have this meal with Lazarus, Mary, and Martha until the eighth day on the 24th. That's why it happened a day after. And then we know in the Bible it tells us that happened six days prior to him going to the cross. So it's pretty incredible how things are lining up right now. Pretty incredible indeed. I'm a child of God. That's it. That's all. It's that simple. Satan has been trying to fill your head and make it more difficult than it actually is. And it is actually as simple as going to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know. You don't need to tell anybody. Go in there and talk to your creator. He created you. He knit you together. And he wants you to come home. He does not want a robot. He wants somebody who made a clear, concise choice to take that cup that he was offering, that cup of salvation, and drink freely from it. Salvation is 100% of the Lord. But you are a person that has um, free will to take that cup or deny that cup. And so many, so many were offered that cup and have denied that cup. They have found every excuse. The Bible's not, the Bible's old. Uh, Jesus doesn't exist. There is no God. There's a bazillion reasons that Satan has filled people's heads with as to why um, they should not take that cup of drink. Satan does not want you. Why would you do anything that Satan wants you to do? But so many will. Billions will. And so you're being offered that cup. Will you take that cup and drink from that cup? God, again, does not want robots in heaven, zombies. They're here because uh, I, I decided to take this one, and I decided not to. That's not how it works. Once you are saved, you are placed in a category. When Jesus was on the cross, he did not only die for the bride. When he said, into thine hands I commend my spirit, he did not only die for the tribulation saint, where he says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me, which is what they will say. He did not only save the Jew, where they also said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But in John, it is finished. Remember, John is 144,000 virgin Jewish males that will be running around warning everybody not to take the mark. They will receive a double portion. You will have to take that cup and just throw it against the wall intentionally not to be saved. Being saved is that simple. You don't have to do anything. And you will, but you don't have to do anything. But there will be evidence that you're saved. But you don't have to do anything. Are you listening? Like, comment, share, and subscribe. We are going home so very soon. Every single channel is telling you the same thing. Everybody feels it. Everybody knows it. Come on, jump into the ark. The door is wide open. Still, it's wide open waiting for you to take that cup and drink from it. Repo Man 64, we'll chat with you again later.